All right, just answering some of your questions. I'm going to whiz through as many of these as I can. Um, some of these have got nothing to do with sick of it, so I, I, don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing here, really. But I said I'd do it now. So, um, Blair Godby, they've asked, All right, Carl, would you rather eat the same thing for the rest of your life or never eat the same thing twice? Um... Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to eat the same thing again and again and again for the rest of my life. That's pretty depressing. I love food. So, yeah, I'd have to go for like, um, never eat the same thing twice. And the thing is, there's loads of variety anyway, isn't there? Like, I love pie, but you're not saying I couldn't eat pie more than once, are you? Because there's, there's like meat pie, meat and potato pie, mince pie, chicken pie. Steak pie. And pasta. I'm a big fan of pasta. All taste the same. Different shapes. If it's got a different shape, it's got a different name. So that's a different different dish in it. So yeah, definitely. That's what I'd do. Never eat the same thing twice. Easy. <sighs> Isla. Is that Isla? Isla? Isla Scott, I-S-L-A, here's a tough question for you, what is it that you are most sick of, look forward to your answer, um, at the minute, probably adverts, Just constantly being sold stuff, aren't we? All the time. And I don't know if it works. It's a bit like me doing this now. The only reason I'm doing this is to flog a program. But I don't know how many of you are just going to end up watching this somewhere else where there's no sort of reason, there's no explanation as to why I'm doing this. I'm doing it to flog sick of it. But we're so bombarded by messages, it's hard to cut through and get heard, isn't it? So I don't know if it works anymore. I don't know if it's ever worked. I was talking about this to my dad about three nights ago. If you think about it, you never see an advert for eggs, do you? There's no TV advert for eggs, and yet we're all eating eggs. So I don't think it matters. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm doing this. So that's, um, you know, that's kind of what's been annoying me of late. Watch Sick of It on Sky One. That'll probably be chopped off. Another one. Becky Irons. What's currently your favourite insect and why? I'm going for the... Um, the bobbit worm. Weird thing. So alien. Um, they're in the sea. These little nasty worms, they're unbelievable. I saw them on um, David Attenborough when he did the, the ocean stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff in there, but they, they're like thing of nightmares. They just hide away under the sand like that. And then a fish goes over the top and they can sense it and they just come out really fast. Fish doesn't know what's hit them. Just rips them apart, eats it and just sort of goes back under again. That's it, that's the purpose. Proper nasty. When you see stuff like that, I don't, I don't know why we're looking on other planets for, for alien life, because you cannot get more alien than that. The bobbit worm. Google it. I think, um, that's what's weird when people go on about life on other planets. I just wonder if Everywhere's the same as here. Everyone wandering around, with their head down, looking at the phone. Or, I've, I've also, you know, it's the thing that, um, it's the same as here, but just a little bit behind. Do you know what I mean? There's another planet, but it's, the, it's like the 1980s. Everyone's on there messing about with, like, you know, a Rubik's Cube or something. Um... 
Yeah, don't go searching other planets for weird shit. It's all here. I'm sick of this. Um, another question. Only nothing to do with sick of it. That's on Sky One. Um, Omar. He asked me, all right, Carl, could you recommend a quality toaster, please? Um, I enjoy crumpets and thick slice of toast, but not doorstep toast. Thanks. Um, I've got a, a DeLonghi. Oh, that works. I can understand, to be honest, I was a bit like, why is he asking that? But there is a lot of bad toasters out there. Most of them are in, like, hotels. You know, when you go downstairs and it's a help yourself breakfast. And it takes forever. You put your toast and you have to stand, the sort of bread goes stale before it's toasted. There's a lot of, considering it's a simple thing it's got to do, there's a lot of shit toasters out there. Um, and there's complicated ones now as well, like... Um, can get ones that do toast and warm up beans or fry an egg. I, I don't think that's ever a good idea, having something that does more than one thing. Just, just all I want it to do is make toast and make toast well. I think if you start introducing other things, they go wrong. I remember like a bed coming out that had a telly built in at the bottom of the bed. But then if the telly breaks, you've got to send your whole bed away. So just, just get a simple toaster. There's loads of them out there. Right. Still going. Another question. Jake Tomkinson. Carl, would you rather have constant dry eyes or a constant runny nose? Uh, probably runny nose. I think. I've got, I've got fairly dry eyes anyway. I was wondering if that's. Um, I think I read something about this. Like, Suzanne, she's always crying. Not because of me, but because of, you know, stuff on the telly. Um, you know, someone with no legs, they get the garden done up and all that, and they bring him out and go, here's your garden. She, uh, and um, I'm happy for them, but I never, um, water never leaves my eyes. And I think it's because I, I still don't drink enough water. I meant to drink, you meant to drink quite a few pints, aren't you? Because I had kidney stones a few years back, and, um... I think that's what it is. I reckon I'd cry more. I think that's why there's more crying. Because we're always being told, aren't we, to drink more water. Bottled water everywhere. Definitely more people drink more water now than they did when I was growing up. And it seems to me like more people are crying than they did when I was growing up. So I wonder if that's, that's how it works. If you've got a load of water in your body, it wants to come out, it comes out easy from the eyes but because I don't drink enough I think your body basically is saying you haven't got enough water in your body you're a bit dehydrated so I'm not going to waste it by coming out of your eyes I still get upset I can still be sad or whatever don't cry that much I get a lump in the throat I get that one when you feel a bit like choked up a bit sad in a film or whatever but um so, yeah, what was the question? Would I rather have constant dry eyes or that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going for the runny nose. Greg Walsh. Any references to horses living in houses in this series? No. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about something I talked about on the radio 15 years ago. That was something I saw 
about 15 years ago before that that's yeah it doesn't get a look in I think people keep thinking this series is like based on my life and all that it isn't it's made up it's a made up thing there's no truth in any of it the woman there's no woman in it who's playing me auntie everyone thinks that's like my real auntie it isn't it's got nothing to do with her there's another question before like oh are we going to see your auntie fart for five minutes because it was something I talked about ages ago. No. None of that. It worries me. This is what worries me because it's got nothing to do with anything like that. Um, these are just little sad stories. If you want farts and all that, you have to go to YouTube. In fact, if that's what you want, there is a... I was watching something the other day about a hippo. hippo but type in YouTube... Um, Hippo fart. It's unbelievable. Um, the power that comes from its arse and there's mud flying about everywhere. Its tail's whizzing round because of the power. Um, something like 24 million views. It's unbelievable. The effort that I've gone into to write in sick of it. Um, and yet, you know, 24 million people watch a hippo having a fart. So... No, I want to make that clear now. That there's nothing like that. There's nothing, um, there's no sort of slapstick stuff in it either. It's it's sad little, well, not all of them are sad, but they, they, they're just little sort of um, nice little stories. I'm sick of it. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, um, but that's the gamble, isn't it? Whenever you make something, you chuck it out there. Some like it, some don't. Um... I think I've warned you loads of times. So if you don't like it, don't be sending me messages because I've warned you that you might not like it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. No horses in houses. Alright. Alright, another one. Declan Shields. Um, question is, what was your biggest challenge in taking such a different approach to this compared to other projects you've been involved in? What's your biggest challenge? It was um, concentration. Sitting in a room with Richard writing it, um, I'm hopeless. I'm really bad at, like, if I hear a noise, that's it. It's the same problem I had at school, really. I couldn't just, even though I know it's important to just focus on something and not be distracted by any outside thing, um, I really, really struggle. So it was harder for me to do this than it, it probably would be for most people. And um, the office we were in, it was quite near Covent Garden which isn't the quietest place. And every day around 12 o'clock, a fellow was sat outside and I could hear him. Uh, he's got a road cone. And he's like that, singing, singing down a road cone and he does a, a mixture. I've always looked on the uh, bright side of life and the Flintstones theme tune. And he does about 10 seconds of each. So it's like, Always look on the bright side of life. Flint down, Peter Flint down. Always look. And it drove me mental. Um, every day. So, yeah, that was. You see, people won't even think that when they're watching it. The struggles, having that going on. So I'd say, yeah, that was the toughest thing. Having buskers outside the office. Right. Still going. Liam O'Connell. I heard you say episode one and five were no good. Do you advise to just watch the other four? No, you've got you've got to watch all all six of them. I'm just saying I've got favourites because that's what happens, isn't it? No matter what you do in life. Um, you know, whether it's a box of quality street or like a variety pack of breakfast cereals 
or even if you've got, you know, a few kids, you're going to have a favourite, aren't you? And the ones that are my favourite might not be yours. But it's just, uh, the thing with episode one is, it's a new thing, isn't it? So you're going to be watching it, thinking this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And there's a lot of setting up involved in episode one. You know, so you understand my backstory in it, my character in it, and all that. Um, so, you know, well, you'll watch one, but I just think it gets better. I spoke to someone yesterday on the radio, and they were saying they thought it got better and better and better and actually wanted more by the end. Um, which is good, you know, that's, that's what I want to hear. Um... I think that's answered that, on it? Another question. Joe Savannah Titchmarsh. Did you miss that air piece that you wore in the moaning of life? We thought you looked like you just stepped out of the 80s. I thought it did look all right, actually. Um, yeah, it was good having air again. But, um, what can I do? You know what I mean? Everything looks better with air, doesn't it? Um, you know, look at them cats. I always think of them cats you can get now. Those bald cats. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. Um, I don't know. Imagine, they never use them, do they? They don't use them on the front of Christmas cards like they do with the little fluffy ones it's always a fluffy cat in it sort of rolling around with a with a bauble on a christmas card they've never used one of those bald ones because they look weird because stuff looks better with air so what were you saying do i miss it yeah but i, I can't wear a wig can i now because people go well, we, we know it's false so if it's false what's the point but um yeah, did make me look better. <sighs> Another one. Tracy McKenzie. Looking forward to it. I'm sure I have an inner Carl saying all the things I wish I could say out loud. We all have... Um, we all have like an inner self, don't we? You know what I mean? An inner voice. I've done a few interviews for this and people are always going, oh, is it about having like mental issues and that? No, nothing like that. It's just working stuff out in your head. Um, it does me head in. The inner voice does me head in. It, it, even though at times I think well, it should be there looking out for me, it just does me head in. When I was making this, the inner voice was never happy with what I've done. It was always like, you, oh, you could do better there. Makes problems. I'm, I'm fine. And then it's, it, it starts getting involved and worries me. Um, I remember reading this thing. Uh, I don't know when it was, like years ago. About this fella who had two faces. And the um, front one, he was quite a good-looking fella. And on the back of his head was this other face. And um, it said, um, it said this face on the back of his head. He used to talk to him at night when he went to sleep. He'd be there like that, talking to him. It was like an evil, an evil twin on the back of his head. Well, weird. Um, you'll have to Google it. See, I think I read somewhere that it didn't, it wasn't real. But the idea of it is terrifying, isn't it? Um, but that's what it's like in my head at times. I'm never fully, uh, fully happy with anything I do. That little bit of a niggle inside, thinking it could have been better. Wish it wasn't there. And it's weird because I put, I try to put this in sick of it. Like I'm playing two roles in it. I'm playing me 
and I'm playing inner self. And what's weird is inner self has all the best lines in it. You watch, and that just goes to show that it's it, it's looking after itself and not looking after me. Weird that. Thanks for your question. Still going. Paul Mills, he says, not sure how I feel about this, this being sick of it. Was you acting all along? Do you know what? It does me head in. How like, I feel like I'm not allowed to have a go at, at something else. People are always like, no, no, you should just be doing podcasts, you can't do anything else. It happens with everything I do. When I did books, people were going, no, you're not an author. Well, you are. As soon as you bring a book out, you're an author. And acting, it's, uh, I'm hardly acting. It's it's me being me in it, virtually. Um, for me, acting's when you, you're having to be someone else. You know, if I was in Shakespeare, this is what you'd be getting. You know, I'd be like, to be or not to be, that's what I want to know. That, that, that's all, that's all this is. It's me, but with a storyline that's been, you know, written. That's it. Um, so, yeah. Hope you like it, but if you don't, I'll at least give it a go. If you don't like it, that's fair enough. You're not going to like everything I do. Um, but just give it a go. All right. Russ Colley. All right, Russ. He says, how refreshing to hear someone talk frankly about something they've created. So many others would bleat on about how they've made something world altering. I hope it's a success. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest about it. I'm, I'm proud of it, but, but I'm just being a realist. It's all right. It's as good as it probably could be. Um, tried our best. That's, that's the end of it. Um, I hope it's a success. It's a weird thing that I don't know how you, how you measure it when it comes to TV programmes and that. Uh, you know, say if a, a thousand people like it, it's a success, isn't it? It's quite a lot of people to like something that you've made. But some people would probably say, no, it's not enough. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how you measure it. It's not like um, it's not like sport or the Olympics, you know, like they win a medal. It's clear cut in it. You win gold, silver, or bronze. That's it. You like the top three runners or whatever. But it's um, it's weird with telly. And I don't want awards. I've, not, I've never been interested in that. In fact, I could never be an athlete because that's the only thing they do it for, isn't it? Really, the uh, the medal. And I'm not into having sort of chunks of metal lying around, ornaments and stuff, just collecting dust. I could never do it. Not interested. I, I, I admire, you know, sort of sports people doing it for that. Um, but, you know, getting up early every day, I'm uh, go jogging round in the cold and you can't eat cake and all that, and all they get if they win is like a, you know... A lump of metal to put around the neck. And people who get bronze, I mean, Jesus. Bronze. I've got, I've got door handles around the house made of bronze. So that's basically what they, you know, all that effort they put in training. And they're basically winning like a, a, a doorknob. So, um, yeah. I suppose, you know, I just, just give it a watch. Um, and uh, cheers for your message, Russ. Mark 
Matt Brown, he's left me a message. Hi Carl, did you know that studies have shown that wild chimps in Guinea drink fermented palm sap, which contains about 3% alcohol by volume. A little bit of monkey news there. Um, yeah, I know I've seen that. I still keep an eye on like the old monkey news. I was watching some video the other day that someone sent me with some, I don't know where it was, Thailand or something like that. And you just saw this little, little monkey whizzing down the road on a motorbike. Absolute lunatic he was. No helmet on. Um, crashed, like going through a market. Knocked a load of stuff over, nearly like ran some fella over. He wasn't injured, he sort of came off it, ran off. So it's still going on. The old monkey news. Uh, cheers for that, Matt. Sarah Child, she says, when will the world end? Um, the world won't end, will it? We might be wiped off it, we'll die out because we, we won't have any purpose anymore. But the world will always be here, won't it, in some form. It might blow up, might be a bit smaller. Um, it'll have different stuff wandering about on it. But it'll still be here. Right, well that's uh, answered your question. See, it does me head in. Just looking at your messages here, right? So I've got a message here from Andy Meller. He says, yeah, 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 you've told us about it once, Carl. Stop banging on about it, right? I sort of agree with him. But the problem is, then you get someone else. Graham Marchant saying is it a drama or a documentary so it's a drama and there's been a promo out there for ages but people don't pick up on it so they're confused and then there's someone else there saying uh, oh Robbie Hannah saying naturally funny man awesome it's not that funny so there you go there's three people someone's saying they're sick of hearing about it someone not sure about knowing what it is and someone else who thinks it's going to be funny when, when it isn't. So, as much as I've been going on about it and trying to get my point across, it doesn't work. So in a way, I'm not, I'm not going to bother answering anymore. Because all I can say is watch it. It's on Sky One. You can also watch it on Now TV. Um, keep your expectations low. And I hope you like it. If you don't, I'm sorry about that. But um, it is what it is, isn't it? All right. See you then. See you Uh, Matt Notton, he's asking, um, looking back at the finished result, is there anything you think you would have done differently? Yeah, they, there's always a couple of things, no matter what you do. You know, there's always something that you sort of go, oh, could that have been done a bit better? Um, but it is what it is, isn't it? You can keep doing that. 
you never I don't think humans are ever sort of 100% happy with with anything so it, it wouldn't be a good idea to keep going back and try to put it that's 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 like one of my issues with the idea of a time machine I think we'd never get anything done if you could keep going back to make something better we'd never get anything done we just keep tweaking whatever you know whatever it is you'd sort of go right that's that done and, oh hang on a minute we can tweak it go back make it a bit better and you'd go back you'd mess with it and then you go actually I, pre I think I preferred it how it was go back again tweak it again actually I've got another idea that's it and you'd never have anything completed so I think um, that idea of a time machine if it, I don't know if you know the Cher song that came out um, if I could turn back time, all she ended up doing was how did it go? It's a song on it. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way, she 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 fell out with a boyfriend or something over something she said, and she wanted to get in a time machine to go back and put it right. But it's kind of like, well, no, just be careful what you're saying. Don't go about upsetting people. Think about, you know, before you open your trap, think about what you're saying. Um, so I don't think um, time machines... Actually, that wasn't even your question. Is there anything you want to do differently? No, it is what it is. I think it's fine. Zach. Rawa. When washing the dishes, do you use marigolds? No, I don't. Um, and there's a reason. I've heard that when you... Um, for people who don't know, who don't do much washing up, marigolds are, are rubber gloves. A brand of rubber gloves. And I've, there's a reason that you, you don't need to wear them. Because your hands, when they get wet, they go wrinkly. And that happens so you have more grip in water. So you, don't, you shouldn't wear gloves because there's more chance of, of dropping stuff. Dropping plates and all that if you've got gloves on. Whereas nature has made it so that when your hands are wet, they go wrinkly, give you more grip. It's good that, isn't it? 